Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. If you're brand new here, please be sure to subscribe and stick around. We have so much fun crafting on my channel and we'd love to have you join us. So in this video, I am doing all things Christmas. So more specifically, I am doing gift giving with my Cricut and a couple other gadgets in my craft room. So I have a very long list of gifts for friends and family that I want to get going today. And I don't even know how many I'm doing, but it's a very long list. I have all the time that I need to get it done so this is what I'm going to do today this may be a longer video just because I have quite a few things to accomplish but I need to get it all done all wrapped and all sent out so I'm really looking forward to this on that note if you are friends or family be sure to just skip this video for now maybe come back on December 26 and watch this because I don't want you to spoil what's going to be under your Christmas tree so on that note let's go ahead and hop into the video again it's probably gonna be a longer one I have no idea how many things I'm creating today but I'm sure I'll put it in a really catchy title for this video so you know how many things I'm going to accomplish. But I hope this inspires you, gives you a little motivation to get your craft stuff out. A lot of the stuff I'm shopping my little craft space for because I've kind of kept things over the year to do for the holidays. So I'm really excited to get all of this stuff done and let's go ahead and hop into the tutorial. Oh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this fun little shirt. I thought it only fun to make a fun sweatshirt for myself as I am working so hard on Christmas. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that first. You'll see in the video and then I'm going to just be working, working, working and hopefully getting a lot of stuff done. Okay, so for my first little craft tonight, I'm actually going to do something for me because it's only appropriate that as I am crafting and crafting and crafting for Christmas that I make myself a cute little number to wear while I am working so hard on getting everybody's gifts ready. So I thought this would be cute. I've had this really pretty forest green sweatshirt for a while now. I think it's from Target. It's Universal Thread, so yes, Target. And I just thought it would be really cute to put Mama Claus on it as I am working on all these fun gifts so I'm gonna go over to the heat press I'm gonna press this give me something fun to wear for all of this fun creating and then we are going to get going on all of these gifts okay so I am all set to go my craft room is messier than I like it to be I have been trying to as I finish each night do like a little cleanup that way I just feel like I am like in control, right? This time of year can get a little bit crazy as we're just, I don't know. I don't like that my craft room is a mess, but it kind of tends to be this way when I'm working so hard on getting a lot of stuff done. Okay, so I'm just gonna preheat. I need to change my pressure. I'm just gonna preheat my sweatshirt, there we go. And get all the moisture and wrinkles out just like I normally do. And then I'm going to place my design on here. Okay, now let's double check where this needs to go. I'm going to use my measuring tape really quickly. It's about three and a quarter and this is about three and a quarter. Okay, that is good. So I need some heat, well, maybe I don't. I was gonna say I might need some heat tape because it tends to, with the heat of my press, it tends to wanna make this roll up, but it's not doing too bad tonight. So I might just, just wanna make sure I like that. Putting that a little high just because of the neckline. I think I'm gonna go about I think I'm gonna go about two and a quarter inches. I don't have a tried and true three inches or two inches or four inches or hand length. I definitely refer to the style of shirt and the neckline that I'm using and go with that. Okay, so I think that looks good, but I'm so indecisive. Okay, let's press it fast. Okay, and peel up. Ooh, that laid down really nice. Okay, 
I'm going to lay this back over. Everything looked perfect, but I like to just give it a little bit more heat and just about five to 10 seconds. And then we'll be good to go. So let me know, are you kind of keeping up on keeping your craft area tidy as you are crafting for the holidays? Or do you just kind of, you know, let it all go and worry about it later? Okay, that looks awesome. Ooh, I love the placement of it. I love that. Okay, check out how that turned out. Now you'll see a box. Do you see this box? Um, that is just from the heat, so that will fade away. But I love this. It's like more of a distressed forest green shirt, so I am wearing this as I craft. And I think this will be so fun. I think it's just gonna be really fun and seasonal and cozy. And then after I'm done crafting, how cute would this look with like some plaid pajama pants or something? I mean, come on. Then you could watch your Hallmark movies in it. And uh, Okay, if I haven't talked you into it by now, I'm not gonna talk you into it, it's just adorable. Okay, now let's go ahead and start. I have so many crafts to get done. I don't even know the number. I'll put the final number on the video. I have a list that just keeps growing and by the time I cross five things off, I add 10 more. So we will see how much we get done in this video. And if not, we will just keep crafting and crafting. Okay, so let's move on to the next gift I need to work on to get ready to send out. Okay, so one of the gifts I need to do is this is going to be a grandparent gift and I thought it would be fun to just do a photo frame and kind of personalize it a bit. So I cut out this cute little we love you and then I used a font called Nicolini and you can get it off of um, is it defont.com? I think it's defont.com and I love it. I think it's so pretty. So definitely grab it. It's just one of those fonts that comes in handy time and time again. It's a really pretty kind of classic retro-y. I mean, is that, even, is that even a thing, classic retro? I kind of feel like that's an oxymoron, but if that makes sense, it just, it looks classic-y retro-y to me. I'm not sure. Okay, we're gonna go with it. So I'm just gonna grab some of this clear transfer tape. Sorry if this is a little bit of annoying sound. But I'm just gonna place my design down here. I found this pretty shiplap inspired frame at Target. They are so cute, easy to personalize because they give you a nice base here, here as well. So it's just a really pretty frame in my opinion. Okay, so now I have my clear transfer tape over that. And I like a clear transfer tape when I need to really line something up. So it just really helps me see well. I'm just gonna run my scraper tool over the top and then again over the bottom. Okay, now you'll see that this says removable. Removable vinyl is a-okay for projects like this. Permanent vinyl is definitely preferred when you're doing anything that's going to get wet. So any type of glassware, anything that is gonna, um, you know, need to stand the test of weather. So things that may be going outside, but for home decor, in my opinion, removable is just fine. So don't be too intimidated by removable vinyl. Okay, so. I am going to take away that liner. Oh, I love this font so much. Okay. And then I'm just gonna center that where I'd like it. How cute. I need to go a little bit over here. Okay, I like that. I'm gonna grab my scraper and just scrape down. And you could do any type of personalization here. You could do names. Um, you could say Merry Christmas. You could say grandkids. If it's not for grandparents, you can say you know anything else that you would like. But I thought this was so cute. And then I'm just gonna put a family photo in here and who doesn't like photos, right? I love it. Okay, easy peasy. 
here's the final look for that. I love it. I think it's pretty. I'll put the picture in there and get this one wrapped and sent out. So super easy. Grab a frame, grab some vinyl. Also, did you see how small that piece of vinyl was? Came on a piece just like this. So make sure you're saving your scraps. As I always tell you, save your scraps because you can turn little pieces into a gift for Christmas or a gift for any type of occasion. So make sure you're saving all those tiny pieces because they really add up. Okay, there is one gift done. Let's keep going. So while my heat press is on, I am going to do a cute little onesie for um, someone who's going to be having a baby. So I found this little SVG and it's perfect for the couple. So I am going to make this for them. I think it's going to be so cute. So I'm going to really quickly just go ahead and head on to over to the press. I'm going to pre-press this to make sure that the moisture's out. Then we'll line it all up and press it down onto the shirt. I will be sure to link all of the SVGs that I'm using down below in case you'd like to purchase them yourself or take a closer look at them. Them. and I'll be sure to link all the materials also that I'm using in all of my crafts as we get going. All right, let's go ahead and press this next gift. Okay, so I'm going to put this little shirt on here. Okay. And if you want, you can use a pressing pad inside of the shirt just to help raise the seams up off of the press. So you get a really even press, but I'm gonna do without. Usually I don't have any problems, so I'm just gonna go with it. But feel free to use that pressing pad. I'm gonna make that a little bit tighter. Maybe tighter so. And now, of course, there we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. That feels good. Just doing that pre-press. Ooh, everyone is tap dancing upstairs as I work in my little workshop. It's the North Pole down here. Okay, for little onesies, I do have a tried and true um, method that I use. I do do one inch from the collar line, especially for these little baby shirts. So that one I do have a tried and true, even a little less. I mean, I'm actually about three quarters of an inch from the collar line. That's one and three quarters. And that is oh, one and three quarters. Look at that. Ah! That is my superpower is the lining up. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and press that down. Okay. And same as last time, I'm going to peel up. Oh, it Let's see, it's perfect without the pressing pad. Go ahead and do that if you want to, but I just play with my pressure a bit and I haven't had any problems, so I'm not going to fix it if it isn't broken, right? But do what you want to do, for sure. We all craft different as long as it turns out and we're happy with it. That's what matters. Okay, there we go. So cute. Okay, there is the final little onesie. How cute is that? And then you can personalize any color that you would like. I thought this was a really nice little combination. The nice gray, it's kind of a darker gray on a white onesie. I thought it was really pretty. So I love that, they're gonna love it. And there is another gift crust off of my list. Okay, another thing I want to do is make some cute little keychains. Now these are really great for stocking stuffers. So I'm making some for my girls, but I'm also making a couple additional ones for some Christmas gifts as well. So these are, let me show you kind of how I put these together. These are keychains from Hobby Lobby. They are, they come in a huge pack. I can't even remember how many, at least a dozen. And you can find them there. They come just looking just like this with a little white paper on the inside. So what I did was I opened this up I took the paper out and then I used this as my template and found some pretty scrapbook paper that I liked and I found this really pretty floral paper I cannot remember where I found it probably Hobby Lobby I want to say maybe Michaels but I I probably is probably Hobby Lobby but anyway I cut out two pieces so it would be double-sided and then oh, it looks like I have another piece in there but your weeding tool will come in handy when getting these little discs out. Okay, so then what I did is I just cut those out. You can have your Cricut cut them out as well. Sometimes I find it's just easy to 
put this right on a piece of paper, cut around it, it's quick and easy. Um, then I'm just gonna make this double-sided, just like so, and then I'm gonna place it right inside of the keychain, just facing it whichever direction that I like. Okay, and then that little back piece is just gonna go right back on, and it kind of just clicks in there. Got to put a little bit of force into it if I'm being honest, but whoops. You also could do pictures in these. So if you have pictures, you can just use your template, cut around the picture, come on, and then you're good to go. Okay, let me kind of hurting there we go it's kind of hurting my fingers there we go so here is our little keychain so I made four of them and then what I did is I found um some scrap vinyl that I had so again save all your scraps because they can come in handy I have one in kind of a blush pink and then other three are in a bubblegum pink what I'm going to do is I am simply going to place monograms on the front of all of these little keychains and again these would make really cute stocking stuffers if you didn't want to do a pattern paper you could also again do a photo and then you could add a text around the border and just curve that text in Cricut Design Space so that's another way that you could run with this so lots of ideas for what you could do I really wanted to do a pretty pattern paper I thought these would be really pretty and again small enough of an item for stockings and I think that's really really fun okay so I am going to use a clear grid line transfer tape really quick because it'll help me line that up really nicely so I am just gonna lay these down now you can do these one at a time so you can reuse your transfer tape if you would like so I'm gonna say that one time in this video because I know there are some who just love to save their transfer tape and usually I am that way as well but honestly when I am crafting in a hurry sometimes time is a little bit more of a important factor for me so I have an endless list of things I need to get done and saving the transfer tape today is not going to be high on my list so I'm going to just mention that, that way it'll all be okay. All right, so here we go. Scraping down, scraping down, just like this. Okay, now another thing that I am going to do is just trim, trim. There we go. And then that clear tape really helps me line up. So you could do any type of paper, you could also do any color of vinyl. You could make this double-sided if you'd like. Just duplicate your monogram. Again, if I didn't mention it, this is a font called Monogramos, and I believe you can find it on defont.com. I have a whole tutorial on how to make monograms in Cricut Design Space, so just be sure to look that up. I love how that looks. So cute. So I'm going to really quickly do the rest of mine, and let's see and making sure that I'm mindful of where the top is because that's where I want the top of my monogram. That way it lines up really nice. My girls are gonna get, a pair of these are for my girls. Um, they love keychains. It's kind of the new thing. And I remember loving keychains too once I was in that backpack phase, but oh, so cute. I love that one. So neat. And I, I still, this obviously stands out a little bit more. I was out of bubblegum pink, so I had to find another pink to use. But it kind of gives a three-dimensional effect once it's on that, I think it's like an acrylic. Um, but it looks really, really neat. So I still think it looks really fun. Okay, and then another. And again, I can save my 
transfer tape and reuse it. I just wasn't gonna reuse it for every single little monogram. Okay, there we go. Another one, my heater is on. It's keeping me toasty. It's so chilly. Okay, and last one. So very easy, very good way to use your tiny little scrap pieces that I know you're cutting off of your bigger pieces because I know we all love to keep crafting costs down. So doesn't it make your heart happy when you can utilize a small piece of scrap vinyl that originally we were gonna toss? So look at these, very quick, very easy. And again, I just used four out of a huge pack. Very fun, and you can personalize these for guys as well. You could just change out the vinyl color, change out the pattern paper if you even wanted to do a pattern paper, but so fun. I love how these turned out. I think they're gonna be a fun little Christmas gift. Okay, this is another fun little gift that I want to do. So I cannot remember where I found this little wine stopper, but I thought it was so cute. And of course, when you see something like this and you are in the cricketing world, you think, I can put some vinyl on that. So I found this. I thought it would be really cute to do a little piece of vinyl. Why don't we really quickly do that real quick with some of that transfer tape that I just used for the keychains. Okay, because that is the exact perfect size. So I'm going to scrape that down. I just found this little tiny snowflake in Cricut Design Space and of course just sized it to the size that I need. But I thought it would be really fun to make a gift for a friend who is a fellow wine lover like myself and I thought it would be fun to pair a little wine stop with a wine bag with, of course, some nice wine in there. So I'm just going to really quickly trim this down just a little bit more to help me center that visually. Sometimes if I have too much transfer tape, it kind of toys with my eye. But let me grab, I'll hold this up in just a minute, but I'm going to focus on getting that just so real quick. Okay, I like that. Scrape that down. So cute. Okay, you could put anything on there, but I thought it would be fun to do a little snowflake. So how cute and dainty does that look? How pretty is that gonna look in the top of a wine bottle? I think that'll just look really, really pretty and fun. Okay, so I have that. And now I have this bag. Now this is an actual infusible ink bag. So I will link it down below. Originally I was going to do infusible ink on this, but I decided not to because look at this. I think it's called holographic sparkle. It's an iron on and I couldn't resist. I just, I, this just had to go on a wine bag. Then this file is actually in Cricut Design Space. It's actually one of their wine bag template um, cut files. So I'm just going to lint roll this really quickly. Then we're going to take it over to the press and I will press that down. I'm going to press this obviously first really quick and then get those wrinkles out. Then we'll place this right on the bag. Okay. So because this has a really bulky rope and seam, I am going to let that fall off the side of my press. That way it doesn't interfere with my pressing, if that makes sense and I can get a really even press. Okay, and I might have to play around with my pressure. Oh, that actually is okay. Okay, so I'm just letting that fall off. That way that rope doesn't raise up my press too much and interfere with me getting a nice even press there. Hopefully that helped with some of the wrinkles. That did pretty well. I'm gonna do a little bit longer just to get it a little bit more perfect. I could actually turn it over and do that side just to really get those wrinkles out and I have my lint roller once more so that I can just lint roll that other side too okay that's good lint roll this whoops let me lint roll this okay that looks great center my design where I would like that 
that iron on is so pretty. I love it. Oh, that's hot. Okay, I'm gonna let this fall off once more. Okay, and let's press that. Hopefully it gets that last little star. If not, I'm gonna have to do a little touch up. Okay. And I believe this was a cool peel. Oh, I can already tell that I didn't get that little star at the end. So I'm gonna pull that over really quick and just do a little bit more and grab that little guy real quick. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna let this cool and then I'm gonna peel that liner up. That looks so pretty. I'll show you in just a second. Okay, look. How pretty is that? I love it. It's gonna look really pretty with a bottle of wine, so you'll see it this way. Really pretty with a bottle of wine in there and then a little wine stop too. So a really fun like friend gift. I think that is just a really nice little touch. Very, very inexpensive. You don't have to use an infusible ink bag as well. It's just what I had on hand and I'm really trying to be better about shopping my craft room if that makes sense and using what I have on hand instead of continuously buying new supplies. So I had this so I was gonna use it but you can also get just regular cotton or I can't, I'm not even sure exactly the material but a non-infusible ink, this is a polyester but you can get just a regular wine bag as well. So there is another fun little gift idea and another gift that is crossed off of my list. All right, I'm feeling better and better. Does anyone else get a little overwhelmed around this time of year? I feel like I have to kind of remind myself what this season's all about because I get really stressed out with making sure that I do really good gifts for everybody, but um, getting a list together kind of helps me and now seeing things getting crossed off is really making me feel a lot better. Okay, so another little craft I'm going to do is I'm gonna make these for my girls. They love dress up jewelry and I feel like we have a ton of little rings around the house. So I found these at Dollar Tree. They're little unicorn ring dishes. How sweet. So a dollar a piece. I was not going to leave those at the store. That it would just be like a high crime to not pick those up. So I went ahead and picked them up and I thought I would do a cute little vinyl piece on there that says I love you love mama and I just picked a font I can't remember the exact one it's just a design space font and I curved it in Cricut design space and I'm just going to place it around the inside of the dish so I'm reusing that transfer tape that I used for those original keychains so I am keeping my crafting costs down I definitely reuse where I can but also other times I unapologetically and guilt-free throw transfer tape away and you might see that in this video coming up and I'll tell you why okay so I am going to I'm gonna trim around that as close as I can that way I don't have anything interfering and bumping into anything as I'm laying this down so okay so I am going to Scrape down the front, scrape down the back. Okay, and then very carefully, I'm going to, I might need my weeding tool to help keep these little letters down. Very carefully, I'm gonna peel away. It's hard for you to see because I'm working with something so tiny. So, I apologize for that but my priority <laughs> in this moment is getting this done right the first time okay I love you love mama oh my gosh and all the dots to the eyes and the little period perfect okay so I think I'm just gonna let's see do I want it I kind of want it like right here they're gonna love that so cute okay now I'm just gonna do it with my fingers I'm gonna press that down with my finger okay and then peel up that little piece of transfer tape going slow still because I don't want to bring up any letters okay easy peasy I love how dainty and delicate that looks I love you love mama so sweet. 
Okay, I'm gonna really quickly do the exact same thing here. Just trimming really carefully around. Just kind of taking the shape of the actual curved text. Okay. And scraping down. Now you wanna be gentle with your scraper because if you go too harsh, you can peel up those little pieces and those little letters. So I kind of just go firm and slow. Okay, grabbing my weeding tool just in case. Oh, that one's coming, whoa. Okay, that's coming off really nice. Okay, so I think I'll do it in the exact same spot. And just like that. Okay. And then just pressing down with my finger. It's kind of hard to get like any type of scraper tool in there. Okay. Peeling up. There we go. Ah, all the little dots to the eye and the period perfectly intact. How cute. Okay, so a dollar plus a tiny piece of, in fact, that little scrap piece, I think I even cut off of one of those monograms that I made for the keychains. So I'm literally using every square inch of scrap material that I have. And I just love how those turned out. So simple, so affordable you can't go wrong for a dollar and scrap material and i think these turned out really cute they'll be a fun little gift okay so the next little craft i'm going to do for gift giving this year is i'm going to make a little garden flag i'm going to make a couple actually tonight and i think they are going to turn out really pretty so i got a pack of garden flags i think i got a three pack off of amazon and i'll link them down below and then of course I'll link this SVG. This one says, I'd rather be at the lake. It's just perfect for the person I'm giving it to. And then I'll show you the next one that I'm doing as well. But I'm gonna go ahead and pre-press this garden flag and then I'm going to press this in sections on to the little flag here. So I only had 12 by 12 sheets of this pretty powder blue. So what I did is I welded this portion of the design together, then welded this portion of the de design together. That way I could print this on a 12 by 12 sheet and then this on a separate sheet and still get a long design. So usually I have iron on in a roll that's longer than 12 by 12, but for this color I didn't. So I just got a little creative with how I wanted to do it and I got the job done. Okay, let's go to the press I'm gonna pre-press and then get everything laid down really nice okay so of course I'm going to need to adjust my pressure the last thing I did was that thicker um, wine bag oh that feels good okay so I'm just gonna pre-press get all the moisture out but more importantly I'm gonna get all of the wrinkles out of this garden flag and we'll see how ugh. This kind of did this last time when I was doing a sublimation one. It doesn't quite get them all out, but you know what? It does it enough. And when these end up being placed in an actual garden or on the little flag stand outside, they're going to get those little wrinkles out really easily just with the weather. Okay. So now that that is done, I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to start placing my design and getting it all lined up. Now, obviously I'm gonna have to press this in sections. So I'm gonna start with, let me take it over to the other counter. Okay, I need more surface area to work with here. Okay. Now you could do anything with these garden flags. The possibilities are endless. You could do something seasonal. You could do something personal. So you could personalize it with the family's name. There are so many fun SVGs as well for doing like a personalized name. Okay, I am not getting that straight at all. It might be time to take a break and have some pie. Is anybody else still enjoying 
leftovers. Honestly, I like Thanksgiving more for the leftovers than I do the actual dinner. I mean, obviously I love the actual dinner, but I love, I love leftovers. And I'm not a leftovers person. Like in everyday life, when we make dinner, I'm not really into the leftovers, but okay, I think that's how that's going to look. But for Thanksgiving, whew, signed me up. Okay. I think that looks good. I'm going to take this one off. I was just kind of using that to see where I'd want it. And let's press this first one. Okay, so we're gonna get most of it. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and press that. Okay. I got my press didn't quite get up at the top. Let me give it a little zap. Okay. There we go. Looks awesome. Okay, now I'm going to place that other portion on there and I'm going to cover the rest of my iron on once more because you don't want to have exposed iron on on your press. careful not to burn my fingers. Okay. That looks amazing. Oh my goodness. Okay, let me show you. Okay, look how pretty this looks. It's kind of hard with the light, but it's in real per in in real person. See, I need I need to take a break for pipe, but in real life, you can see that really well. That's kind of helps how you would see that so super pretty I love the color kind of very lake looking too okay so let me do the other garden flag with the exact same um, routine and super easy okay so this is the next one I'm going to do I'm making this for a couple that loves to camp as well and as you know my family started camping last year and we got our camper and I did a video on how I decorated our camper with my Cricut. And one thing that I really love about camping is when you go to a campground or campsite, they have, um, or other people have little garden flags out by their camper and some of them have their names on them or they just have little cute camping themes. So I thought that this would be a really fun gift for someone who camps as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and pre-press the actual garden flag and then I'm going to really quickly press this just the same. Now, as you notice, this is all one big piece because I had this gray in a really long roll of iron on so I didn't need to split it apart but again if you didn't have a long roll you could split apart the banner part and the bottom part to fit it on two 12 by 12 sheets of iron on don't forget to mirror your image when you are cutting iron on so just preheating that material getting most of those wrinkles out getting it flattened the best that I can of course it won't be perfect, but also I'm going to have to fold these up anyway to get them wrapped up. So you can't stress too much about perfection when they're going to need to be folded again for gift giving. 
Okay, that is gonna be good enough. And let's get the design. Okay. So, getting the design as straight as I can. And I have a little bit of extra over here. Sometimes that toys with my eye, you know, you know that about me. Okay. Ah. I can do this. Okay. How cute is this? Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, so I'll press it. Still not, that is still not straight. That is still not straight. Okay, one more craft, then I'm going to take a break for some pie, and then all will be well with my soul. Is that, does that look good? I think that looks good. Okay. Yes, I like that. Okay, look how pretty that gray is with the white. Love it. Okay, let's press. Okay, so pressing this first chunk first, and then I'll shift it up and do that second part. Okay, that looks really nice. And then just kind of seeing where I stopped so that I can Press again. Okay, I'll get the rest of the design on there. Okay. Here we go. That's oh, perfect. It's pulling up like butter. Okay. Love it. Okay, look how that turned out. I love it. Isn't that cute? Look at the little camper. And I love the embellishment of the banner as well. I just think it's so pretty. Very, very cute. Okay, so garden flags, very, very cute and fun gift. Again, you could run in a million directions with this because you could personalize with names. You could do something that's seasonal. You could just do anything that that person really enjoys and make it really special for them. So I really like how this turned out and I just think it's gonna be a perfect gift. Okay, I'm gonna do one more gift and then I'm gonna take a little break for some, for some yummy pie. And this craft is going to be a really, really cute one. So I have a couple little first Christmas um, gifts to give this year and I found these cute little ornaments at Michael's. They come in a bare wood just like this, but on one side I decided to add some chalk paint and I'll link the chalk paint that I use time and time again over in that description box below. And so I did two coats and I used a very fine paintbrush. That way I didn't get any paint on the actual border where it has those nice wood beads. But I thought these turned out really, really sweet. And you'll see some more decor um, and um, ornament styled uh, things on my channel coming up with these as well because I bought quite a few of them. So I found this SVG. I'll link it down below as well. I thought it was a really, really cute. Baby's First Christmas. And it's in a circular nature. So pretty. And then it has 2021 with the little feet. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to... Just place my designs on my transfer tape here and then cut them apart. So cute. Or I guess not so cute on the transfer tape, but I'm thinking about the design. Thinking about the design here. Okay, so let's do our scraping. And there we go. How is your crafting for Christmas going? Let me know what you're making. I love hearing what everybody else is doing in their craft room as well. 
I held off as long as I could just to enjoy the other aspects of this fall season. But now it's time to get things crafted, wrapped in the mail, under the tree. And now with this SVG, I'm going to have to go really slow. The letters are very small. And we have a lot of little tiny embellishments. In fact, in Design Space, I actually contoured out a couple of teeny tiny embellishments just because I think they had some little like dots around here as well. And I took those out because I didn't want to worry about them not weeding well. And also, I just didn't th think they were necessary. They were pretty. I'll give you that. But the size of them, I, th I thought... They weren't really adding anything but a headache to me. <laughs> but a headache. Okay. We've all been there, right? Where you kind of look at a design and you're, you're kind of thinking, mm, that's not cute enough to be, uh, you know, stressing me out. Okay. Ooh, that looks so cute. You can do this in any vinyl color as well. I liked the kind of classic look that the gray gave and you never know if the person you're giving it to you know I kind of thought this was a safe color I guess because sometimes people don't want like too much pink and blue on their Christmas tree you never know so I just kind of keep it a little a little um more classic if that makes sense okay pressing that down and if you have any problem areas, just look that piggy toe. Hello, sir. Stay there. There we go. Just keep your scraper handy. And it's a very fine um, SVG. Like the font part is very fine. So you're just going to take your time. It's laying down really beautifully, though. Now, I will say that when I did... Um, weed this I weeded out all of that those middle and tiny pieces first before I weeded out the surrounding area and that was a game changer in making sure that it all stayed put okay there we go perfect now with transfer tape on painted surfaces I find that the paint gives the transfer tape more of a film and helps it lose its stickiness quite quickly. So I very unapologetically toss this because especially when you have something with such a fine font and small detail, you don't want anything less than perfect with your transfer tape. Now, if you feel differently, then go ahead and reuse that. But for me, I, I save my materials elsewhere so that I can have nice crisp transfer tape if that makes sense. I reuse other things so that I can buy more transfer tape. You know what I mean? That makes sense? Okay there's the first one and I will quickly do the next one. There we go. And here is the next one. Making sure that top is right at the top or the um, little hanger okay see how that transfer tape being clear is going to be very important for something like this very important okay there we go and Slow, slow, slow. Now if you kind of keep your fingers firm and just kind of push as you're pulling, if you're pushing down on the ornament as you're pulling, things like this with really small pieces tend to lay down a lot better. See that? Hey, I might know what I'm talking about here. <gasps> yes. There you go. If you didn't know that, you do now. There you go. How cute. I think these are really sweet. Again, you can change up the vinyl color, but I kind of like that almost farmhouse look to it with the natural wood, the white, and then the gray. I think that's adorable. Love it. And I know that they will too. 
Okay, I have a lot of other iron-on and vinyl gifts that I need to do, but really quickly, I'm going to just take a break and do a little craft for the same family. Um, I'm going to make them a little personalized baby bib, and I just really love applique and embroidery because it really is very calming to me. So I am just going to kind of take a little break here before I do more vinyl and iron-on crafts, and I'm going to work on an embroidery craft. That way I can get this gift done as well. So I am going to make a really cute little monogrammed onesie or not onesie see I do need a little break just to kind of wind down a little bit um not onesie but bib isn't this pretty it's a little ruffle bib and I can't remember where I got it but just um google ruffle bib blanks and I'm sure you'll find something I'm gonna use this really pretty gingham and I'm putting the um, initial right on the front so I'm gonna add a little bit of heat and bond light to the back of my fabric now if you need me to go slower I have full tutorials on applique I'm gonna go kind of quick through this just because I have so many gifts to get done and I want to just keep working and getting them all completed so I'm gonna really quickly lint roll the surface and then I'm going to get my design. Now I printed this off from In Brilliance, and I'm just going to center that on the bib. Now before I tape it down, let me grab my measuring tape so that I can make sure that I am center. I'm going to, that's about four and a half. That is, oh. Four and a half. I'm high fiving myself because I'm crafting alone. Three and a half. And three and a half. Okay. Okay. That is just perfect. Tape it down, sister. Before it moves. Okay. I'm going to tape that down. And there we go. So now I'm going to float this on my Durky Easy Frame. And I have a sticky stabilizer on there so I just layered that on there make sure it's really really tight so it's like a drum and then I'm just gonna float and make sure my design is on on there really well okay making sure that's straight and it's sticky it's a sticky tear away so I just want to make sure that that Okay, that looks good and then because I'm not using a frame that came with my machine I am going to make sure I trace okay so let me get this over there and we'll get going this is gonna be so fast and easy I'm gonna peel away my heat and bond light because I messed up the other day and did not peel this off <laughs> luckily it was on one of my kiddo shirts but made for a very crinkly little applique <laughs> Lesson learned. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and place this right on my machine. I have my design loaded on my USB, making sure that my, the back of my bib is not catching. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my little laser here is right in the center of my design. Whoop. And not quite perfect yet, so. Oh, Bethany. If you have an embroidery machine, you know what I just did. I just kind of slipped my finger and started it all over. <laughs> Oh goodness, keeping me on my toes. Okay, that's perfect. It's right in the middle of those crosshairs. So once I have that, I can go ahead and just take away my paper. And then I'm gonna trace. And I'm watching that laser to make sure that it doesn't come near my frame because I don't want my needle to hit the frame. done with that and I can use any color thread for this 
um, placement stitch. It's just going to trace out the L so that I know exactly where to place my fabric. So this blue that I have in there is fine. Okay, then I can just see where I got that placement stitch so I can place my fabric right on there and do the tack down stitch, which is just gonna secure it to the fabric. There we go. Now it is secure. And we just need to trim around the um, fabric and then we'll do the satin stitch. Okay. And I'm just gonna use my applique scissors. That's not it. <laughs> These are it. Okay. And just trim. Now, I'm actually going to put some water soluble topper on the top of, of this before the satin stitch. Now, I am very well aware that you really only have to do that for towels, but I just really want, since this is a little bit thicker of a material, I personally just want to make sure that the stitches are really nice and clean and honestly it does not hurt anything to put that water soluble topper on there it absolutely does not hurt a thing so if you feel like putting it on there because you're not sure just do it and if it makes you feel better it makes you feel better so that's my reasoning and i'm going to stick to it okay so i kind of you know what i kind of like that navy See that navy? I mean, I'm gonna do pink because, because I am, but that would be cute too. It'd look very nautical for sure. Okay, so I think the stitch out is like four minutes long maybe? The whole, from, is it four or eight? I can't remember. It's very, very short. So very quick little craft. Okay, now I'm going to iron down my heat and bond light. And I'm doing this before the satin stitch because that satin stitch, as you'll see in a moment, is very thick and bulky. It's beautiful, but it's better to iron down that satin stitch right before. Okay. Or <laughs> iron down your material right before the satin stitch. Okay, I'm gonna do a quick little lint roll. I'm gonna change my thread. Let me do the water soluble topper really quick. Okay, so this is it. And just gonna cut a piece big enough. Tape it on, you can pin it on it as well. I'm gonna grab the tape from my um, design that I, I used just to reuse and cut down crafting costs. Remember, I cut down my crafting costs elsewhere so that I can use all the transfer tape I want. Okay, perfect. I'm going to change my thread, and then I'm going to let this stitch out. I'll put some fun, hopefully I can find some kind of Christmassy music. I'll put some fun music for you so you can just relax and enjoy this little stitch out. And then once it does the pink satin stitch, it's going to do a really pretty, I think it's a bean stitch. It's like a white bean stitch that goes right through the satin stitch. I'm going to do that in a white, and I'll show you that at the very end. But how cute is that? Oh, I'm going to make one for my little guy too. Not in this video, but I have some designs I'm going to do on bibs for my little boy pretty soon. So you'll, you can see a boy version, um, in some videos coming up.
Oh my goodness, work. How precious is this? I'm gonna grab my little weeding tool to help me just kind of pull out that water soluble topper. I am so happy I did that. The stitches look perfect. They just look perfect. They look so crisp. I love it. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this out. Now it is water soluble, so if you wanted to like spray it, it would dissolve. You could do that as well. Oh, what cry. So cute, and I know it's gonna be so loved. I just, I know it's gonna be so loved. Okay, look how pretty and dainty and just perfect that looks. Oh, oh, okay. <sighs> okay, so now I'm just going to simply tear it off of the tear away and clean up the back. Now, I'm not going to add anything to the back because, you know, usually little ones have a shirt on or something to cover. Usually you would add like a um, tender touch to the back just so that you could make the threads all soft and or make the back soft but I'm not gonna add anything and honestly I think the back is nice and clean so I'm gonna leave it as is you can go ahead and take any necessary step that you would like but I'm totally fine leaving this open like this so I'm just gonna take all of that off and clean all of this off the back and you could really personalize this any way with any type of fabric. So if you really want this to be Christmassy or, or if you didn't want to do an initial, you could do, you know, a Santa or a snowman. Okay. I think I have a snowman, some snowman shirts that I'm going to do for the girls, probably in another video. Hopefully I get to it this, this season. That's why I'm starting with my crafts first for my presents, my present crafts first. That way if I don't get anything else this season, then at least everyone is happy with their presents. Okay, how pretty. Oh my gosh. I just, I just am in love with it. So there's the final look. I think it's beautiful. And good baby shower gift if, you know, it's something that you need to get, you know, for a baby and new mommy. So I love it. Okay, another gift done for this Christmas. Okay, so the next little project I'm going to do is just little ornaments for our neighbors. And I found a cute little SVG that I wanted to do. So I found these also at Michael's and they are just a really cute scalloped wood ornament. And I am going to leave them in a bare wood, but you can definitely feel free to paint these. In fact, in a tutorial coming up, I did paint these and I did the inner circle, just a really pretty white with some chalk paint. So I'll show you that later. Later if you want more inspiration but for this craft I'm just going to do a really pretty white vinyl on my ornament here and just leave these as is I really love a natural wood I think it's just nice and soft so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm also going to probably just put this in fast forward because I have 15 to do I'm just gonna go ahead and get those all done so for my little designs I have all of them cut out and I have transfer tape on all of them yes I did put an individual piece of transfer tape on each one of these if that's something that bothers you please just feel free to do it differently at your craft table this is how I'm gonna do it honestly I've had the same roll of transfer tape for two years and it costs me under ten dollars so I am really not worried about wasting this transfer tape I've had it for so long it's very cost-effective in my opinion but if that's something that bothers you please just do it differently when you do your crafts so I'm gonna go ahead and get going on this and let's go ahead and just get all of these done so I found this really cute SVG I'll link it down below and I just thought it would be a really cute little neighbor gift I'm also going to put together just a little gift bag of probably actually I found them at Dollar Tree they're just those little 
holiday Ziplocs. Well, they're not Ziploc, but they're just a little type of plastic bag that's, you know, holiday themed and probably just going to fill that with some candy and then deliver them with these ornaments on there. So this just says peace, joy, and love. It has a really pretty little vine embellishment and also a really pretty bow. And I just thought that was really, really pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and just do 15 of these, get them all ready so that I can fill some little bags with candy and have them ready for a fun little neighbor gift. I didn't have enough and now I have too many. This is what happens during the holidays. I think that my mind just kind of goes to mush because I'm just running on, I don't know, merry and bright tinsel and cheer. I don't know. I'm just running on all things Christmas and sometimes whew, you just kind of forget to count or miscount, but that's okay. Also, I wanted to mention another reason why I do not feel bad throwing this transfer tape out after one use is because honestly I don't feel like this paper transfer tape does amazing being reused. Now you can disagree that's totally fine but in my experience and over the couple years that I have been crafting with this exact transfer tape Compared to other transfer tapes, so it's wonderful. I love using it. You know it's one of my favorites. But in terms of reusing it, because it's only you know, like under $10 a roll, I don't feel really guilty throwing it out because I don't feel like, it's so low tack that I don't feel like the second time around is as great. Now, can it be done? Absolutely. I've reused transfer tape until kingdom come. But I don't feel like it does it super, super well with this um, paper stuff. I don't, it's just already low stick anyway. So one of those things, it's one of those things where I'd rather just be able to get something done and get it done well than fight and fight with little tiny pieces with transfer tape that's losing its stick. For me, that's just my personal preference. I would rather just get a new piece and not fight with tiny pieces. Oh, <gasps> look at the love. It is gone. All right, let's go find it. It's somewhere around here. Good thing I checked all these. Okay, where are you, L? Where are you? Mm -hmm. Nope, nope. Well, it's gotta be here somewhere. Nope, nope. I found it. It was in this ball of transfer tape. So I am going to rescue it. 
I think I made one extra, but come here, you little cutie. I found you. Okay. Saving the day. One vinyl letter at a time. There we go. Okay, now let me check all of them. I don't need to be embarrassed by sending a misspelled ornament out. I think we're good. Okay. Whew. All right. 15 little ornaments. So easy. I'm going to put them with some candy and they will be the perfect neighbor treat for Christmas. Okay, so I couldn't let this Christmas season go by without making someone a cute little ornament for their puppy. So I found this at Michael's. How cute is this? And it was already white, so I didn't have to paint it or anything. Super cute. I can't remember how much it was, but I was actually halfway through filming this video when I had to run to Michael's for something else. And I found this and had to add it to the lineup because... I know someone who would just love this. So I went ahead and used that font Nicolaini once more. It's the same font that I used on the picture frame. And I love it. I just think it's so pretty and classic and just has a fun little vibe to it. So I'm using some Oracle vinyl. Again, you can get that font at, is it Defont? I don't know if it's Defont. I think it's Defont.com. But if you just type it into Google, I'm sure you'll find it. So let me, ooh, that was going to give me a little mess for a second. Okay, I'm going to trim that down and boop, get that all lined up well. So easy to personalize little things like this. Okay, try to get that super straight. I feel like that's good and press that down so quick and so easy I used just a spare scrap of vinyl that I had in my scrap bin so easy quick very inexpensive ornament plus scrap material that I needed to use anyway and I have a cute little ornament love it so cute and while I have my transfer tape out, I'm going to do one more vinyl gift. And I have more vinyl gifts coming up, but I might as well do this one right now. And then I think I'm going to switch to the heat press and get that going because actually I have it going and it is so warm in my craft room right now that I need to go ahead and press my next projects so that I can cool it down in here. Okay, so I'm just using some rubbing alcohol. It's just in a little spray bottle that I got from Amazon and I added the vinyl words myself, but I'm gonna go ahead and just rub down this wine glass. Now I am making this for someone who's a teacher and I found this SVG, it's so cute. You'll see it in just a second. And I just knew that she would love it. So I'm going to find my transfer tape. Where did you go? Okay, it's right here. Look, you guys. I've been showing you a little progress update on this forever because I bought this roll two years ago, over two years ago. It was one of the first things I bought when I bought my Cricut machine. I bought it like this and I'm finally reaching the end. In fact, I don't think for this project I can even get enough out. Ooh, no, I can. Well, I don't know if that's gonna work. Let's go ahead and open the new one. I will still save that little piece and do something with it, but I don't think that that's going to be very, very helpful. Okay. So yay. First project with the new roll. Ooh, boy, it feels good to have a new roll of transfer tape. I haven't felt that way in a really long time. Okay. Scraping this down. And in fact, uh, today is black Friday when I'm filming this. And I actually bought a new roll of transfer tape on um, the one of the Black Friday deals. So I'll share when I come. What I'll share about it when it comes, because I wanted I wanted to try something new, um, and I think I'm gonna like it a lot. So it was a super good deal. So I just snagged it up. Okay, okay, peeling off that carrier sheet. I'm also gonna put some relief marks relief cuts, excuse me, into and around my design, into the transfer tape around my design, just to help the transfer tape take on the curve of the wine glass since I'm not laying this down on a straight walled surface. 
Okay, so this says after school snack. How cute is that? I thought that was so cute for a teacher. Okay, so I'm going to just put this, I'm get, leaving plenty of room for the lip because vinyl isn't food safe. So you just wanna avoid putting it where you would place a, your lip, you know, as you're sipping it, just place it down a little bit. And then I'm just gonna go through and rub all those little pieces down with my finger. And I'm gonna try not to get a bubble, but the best thing about this is that you can kind of keep repositioning and laying down as you go. So we will see how that did. I got that really down on the curve there. Ooh, I might need to redo the bottom part, but let's see how this turned out. I'm not gonna rub down that bottom part because I already know I'm gonna need to kind of help it out a little bit. That top part looks good. Oh, that looks really good. And it will come off in little chunks just because there are cuts in it now, so that's totally normal. And, oh, good. Oh, okay, a couple places that I need to just help out a little bit. So I'm just gonna take my weeding tool. I have like a little bubble right here that I just need to work out. I'm gonna pull that up and just lay that down really nice. There we go. And then right here with this little cute, I don't know what's it, what it's called, a little swoop, I don't know. It sounds, it sounds good to me. And then, ooh, that looks good. I feel like there's a little piece right here. If I could get that up. So I didn't do my absolute best work on this particular one, but I can fix it. Okay, I'm just gonna lay this down manually, being really careful. I don't recommend this at home, but I feel like I've had to do this before, and so I've gained some confidence doing this. I'm just gonna kind of peel that up and restick. There we go. There we go, there we go. Yay! Yes, okay, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. Okay, so, after school snack. Oh, it's perfect now. I love it. How cute is that? So I'm gonna let this cure, obviously, it's gonna cure for quite a bit because it's still a long time till Christmas. So this will cure, and then I'll recommend that they only hand wash only and it's gonna be adorable. I love it, and it's a shimmery vinyl. It's really hard to see on camera, but it has a really pretty shimmer to it, to the white, so. Okay, that one's done too. I am just crossing so many things off my list. Let's go ahead and head to the heat press because, whew, it's warm in here. Okay, I fibbed. I'm actually gonna just whip out these little wood signs really quickly. I'm gonna do three wood signs. I love doing cute little signs for gifts and I found this cute SVG that says this is our happy place. This is really, really similar to a piece of decor that I have in our home and it's one of my favorite pieces. So I wanted to gift this a couple times. I'm gonna make this for two different people and then I'm gonna make a third sign as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take my design I just have all my supplies out for vinyl projects, so I'm just gonna get that done really quickly. And I'm gonna do a clear grid line transfer tape for this, just because I wanna make sure I get it lined up perfectly on that um, wood sign there. So I found these wood signs at Dollar General. It was the first time I've ever, ever been into a Dollar General in my entire life, and it will not be my last, because I thought it was a really fun store. So we were camping recently, and we ran out of jelly, and we wanted to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the kids for lunch, so I ran in there. I ran in for jelly, and I came out with like six sacks of 
craft supplies and just a bunch of fun stuff. I found some chalkboards and I found a lot of these wooden signs. So they look just like this in a bare wood. And I painted the other side with two layers of my favorite chalk paint. And I think they're gonna be cute little signs that can just stand up like so. So I, I think I walked away with like five of these, three of which I'm using right now. And then maybe a planter. Yes, I got a planter and the chalkboards gosh i can't even remember but i was so excited my husband was laughing because i went in for jelly and then all of a sudden i walk out of the store just happy as a clam with six bags of not jelly but i did i did i did get the jelly so no worries about that okay so that's always the worst when you get sidetracked and then actually forget what you actually went into the store for so Luckily, that was not the case. So I'm just gonna spring this. I have this really nice, kind of almost a powdered gray. And it is Oracle 651. I'm just gonna lay this nice on my sign here. I love this color. I think it's just so pretty. And I think that looks good. So I'm going to lay that down and then I'll try and reuse this transfer tape and see how it does. Sometimes with painted wood, I feel as if the paint leaves kind of a film on the transfer tape. So if I'm doing projects back to back, I may try to reuse it, but sometimes it's not something that I'll try to save for a later date if it's not, you know in pretty good condition. But again, that's just me. You do you. Okay, so there is the first one. That turned out so cute. I love that. And I love leaving, oh, I gotta salvage this. I love leaving the natural wood on the sides of the sign. I just love the dimension that that offers. Let me leave this sticky and then Here's how that turned out. I think that is so pretty. Ugh, I might have to make an another one for our house. Although we have one, but ugh, could you put it in every room? I think you could. Okay, so there is one, and then they're all the same size, so I should be pretty good to do all of these. Let's see if I can do three signs with one piece. Let's try. Worth a try. Okay, here we go. I like to scrape the front and back down. It's one of the things that I've added to my workflow from the very beginning and it just has always worked for me. I know a lot of people have trouble getting the vinyl off of that carrier cutting sheet and I never really have had that problem unless I'm working with the smart vinyl and then that is obviously a very thick vinyl. I'm testing this because I want to make sure that the side that I put it on is going to stand up well. So the side that stands, I want to stand um, really well on the side I intend it to. Um, anyway, that smart vinyl is really thick, so sometimes I have a lot of problems with that. Otherwise, I feel like that double, oh no, the double um, scrape down really helps. Okay, I should get out my parchment paper, but I'm just in kind of a crafty, not rush, but I'm in that mode. I just wanna get everything done. The next step is wrapping. So I'm excited. I love to wrap. Let me know if you like to wrap presents. I love it so much. It's just really relaxing to me. I got some really cute coordinating paper. I'll link it down below in case you want to see what wrapping paper I'm using this year. I'll link it. Um, I got some really cute coordinating wrapping paper. I picked up some from Michaels and then I also picked up some from Target. In fact, it's at a curbside pickup right now and I need to go get that. Okay, there we go. So that reused very well. Here's our second sign. 
I'll link this design down below too. It's just so cute. It's so well done. And I love the pairing of the block font and the script font. So pretty. Okay, done. And let's do one more. Okay, so this last one says weekends, coffee, and my dog. And I'm really excited to give this for Christmas because I know they're going to love it. Okay. Oop, I didn't quite cover all of that up there, but as long as you get most of it, you're good to go. Okay. Ooh, now I'm kind of making a mess. Okay, there we go. Ooh, I didn't even, I didn't even get close there. That's okay. I'm just missing the tops of the little D and the K there. It's kind of hard when you're reusing it because it's not a really flat sheet. It kind of starts to roll. But if you can, then it's awesome. Okay. So let me grab, again, testing the side that I... Yep, that looks good. Okay, I'm going slow here because I have a couple pieces that are going to fall off that transfer tape. Maybe I'll go from the side here. Okay. Well done, well done. And this is another reason why I don't like reusing the tape. Do you see? just kind of rolls and makes kind of a mess. But again, it's doable. It's just what you have the patience for, right? Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm gonna kind of start in the middle there. Go out towards the edge. So what's everybody crafting for Christmas? I can't remember if I've asked that yet, but if I didn't, then let me know. I hope you are having fun as you craft. I found it pretty, pretty fun this year. Just, and I, I really have been trying to shop my craft room more than ever this year. So that's been fun as well. Just getting to use some of the things that I've always intended on using and give them a good home as a gift. Okay, grabbing this last piece and then I'm gonna part with this transfer tape. Although you probably could get another one or two transfers out of it, but it's just, you know, it's gonna be hard to save at this point. So I'm guilt free about letting that one go. Look how cute that one turned out too. So cute. I really, really like that color vinyl too. It's nice and calm. It's just a really pretty, pretty color. I don't know the exact color, but I'll link the Oracle 651 brand down there so you can take a, take a look. So very fun. I love how these turned out. Gonna make a very fun gift. Okay, so another three gifts right off of my list. And let me see. We are going to start the heat press. Okay, let's go ahead and, or it's started, but let's go ahead and start using it. Okay, so I have lots of shirts to do. I think think four. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get them all prepped. I'm going to go ahead and use my heat press to pre-press them to make sure there is no moisture and also just to get these wrinkles out. And then I will lay my design on here. Now, today is Black Friday when I'm filming this and this morning before breakfast I was on Amazon just seeing if there are any deals and I came across these little t-shirt guides. Let me bring them in. And I am I am usually so good about doing my own um, measuring. I've never had a problem with it, but these were like $5 and they came in, I think a four pack. I'll link them down below. They were a really, really good deal. So I thought, why not? So I ordered them this morning at breakfast. Actually it was after breakfast and they arrived at like lunchtime. I was so impressed. Everybody works so hard. I'm so impressed. So I'm going to go ahead and give these a try. So 
I thought they would be good to use right now as I'm working on my Christmas gifts because I am churning out a few in a row so it would just be nice to be able to get everything centered and right where I'd like it um, very quickly. So normally I don't know that I would use them just because I'm pretty good about doing it myself but I thought might as well give it a try. So I am actually, this says to go to, that says, that looks a little high to me. Or that looks a little low to me. That actually looks way too low to me. I'm going to do this, um, the top of the S right there. Yeah, that otherwise that looks way too low. I feel like that's going to, yeah, I just don't like that. I don't like how that looks. But, and you know what? You've always heard from me that I, it's not really a hard and fast rule for me. I don't really feel like I always do the same exact thing. I go more by my eye and honestly it has always turned out. So to me, I think that that looks better up a little bit higher. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pre-press this shirt. Then I'll make sure I get my measuring tape out and make sure it's centered and let's get going. I'm gonna press four shirts. I'm probably gonna put on some Holly Jolly Christmas tunes and just whip these out real quick and then I'll show you all of the final little looks at the end. So here is the first one that I did. Well, not the first one, but here's the first one I'm going to reveal to you. I, I'm not really a fan. Um, I don't know. I still think I, I think it's too low, in my opinion. Um, if it works for you, it works for you. I personally found that I kept putting the design up a little bit more. I am very much a visual person, so I like to hold the shirt up in front of me with the design on it before I press it, and it just looked better if I moved it up a little bit. So it may work for you if you like this, then that's wonderful. But for me, this is probably something that I'm not going to use, but because it costs just about the same as it would my weekend coffee, I'm not feeling too bad about trying these out because I've been very curious. Okay, so that is one. I forgot to weed out this little middle piece of the sunshine, but that's okay. The person I'm giving this to will not care at all. I think they're just going to love it anyway. And then this is the next one that I did. I just used a font in Cricut Design Space to do this and I cannot remember which one it is. I'm so sorry, but um, I just thought it would be a really fun grandparent gift. Really cute. And then just put the established date for the date when their first grandchild was born. So another fun idea. And then I did this very, very fun for a teacher that we know that I think will just love this. And then the final shirt, definitely one I'm going to recreate for myself. 
I'm gonna put this on my list of crafts that I want to get done for myself. I love this. I love the sage color and then I love the little design. So I'll link all these designs down below in case you like any of them and want to do any types of crafts with them. But other than that, let's move on to the next craft. Let's see, what am I going to do next? I have to think. Oh, I'm gonna put my embroidery machine back on once more and I am going to embroider an apron.
Okay, I have all of that stuff done. I am so relieved. Now I just need to wrap all the things and I'm really excited that I've gotten so many things off of my little to-do list. So I hope this was helpful to you. I hope this motivated you to get started on your crafts for Christmas. If you're crafting for anybody, let me know what you are making. I'd love to hear your ideas as well. And I will see you guys all in the next video.